My name is Tiana Donosinia Liu Fao, and I'm born in Anaheim, California. Well, my father's side is from Western Samoa, or Independent Samoa, and my mother's side is from Laie, Oahu. Tish and dancing has always been in my family. Um, my family dances Polynesian in general, but Tahitian has always been the main passion that my family had, all the way from my great-grandparents down to my grandparents and so forth. And um, that's one thing that has been passed down, and I'm just fortunate enough to still perpetuate Tahitian dance. Since I could walk, I started dancing. So in that sense, dance became natural. Even if uh, at a young age, even when I couldn't crawl or walk, I was always watching my, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, um, friends, family dance. So by the time I knew how to move my limbs, I kind of already knew what it was supposed to look like. The origin of Tahitian dance um, in pre-colonial times served as is pretty much everywhere. Everywhere else it served as our ways to perpetuate um, myths, stories, legends, um, even um, hand motions describing the village where you came from, um, paying homage to different deities uh, for different times of the year, um, and just socially also, it was a celebration. Or even when we were being um, repressed, when dance was taken away from us, we would that was something that we still could call ours. And, and even in that state, it was the way we could express ourselves. My name is Kiro P.I. in America, but my name is Bigira Mustafa Prince Willie David Kiro Kiro. I was born in Burundi, the, like Central East Africa, a little tiny, tiny country. When you play drum, you feel this energy, the sound, and you know is your hands, and then it is your ear who hear that and then you make what you want to hear. In Burundi, not every day you can hear drum, but it's every other day you can hear drum. Somebody is drumming, somebody is drumming. So the Burundi drama, we have a kind of a costume. Everyone dress the same, and the height is different, and then you just come by, like, by size. And then the little one, there's a little one who keep going, those guys to keep going. We always little one, three or four. It was like a competition, yeah. Just feel like you are together, you just like a, hey, this is ours. And then these people, the audience, they're there. You see, they put all of this for us. So there's like a 20 drummers in the back, and then there's a one center drum. So everybody must to come to that drum. Now, they jump even higher because they know the, the meaning and there's a competition in pace. So they compete and then they drink. They say, oh, you, you start to drink because, and, but now they even get prizes.
Jason Boucher. I was born here in Southern California. And this is my wife, Binta. My name is Binta Job. Um, I was born in San Luis, Senegal, West Africa. I began dancing since I was little because we grew up with dancing. My family, they all drum and dancing and dance. So I started dancing since I was a little girl. I feel like I can dance for, forever, for all day because you see drum every day, you hear drum every day when you are in Africa. So every time you hear drum, you, can, you just want to dance. You can dance the longest you can. My dad, his name is Masamba Jot. Um, he's a, one of the drama in West Africa. And I met my husband through my dad because my dad has a project called Senegal American Project. And that project, he takes people from here, from the college, to bring them in Senegal to visit and for them to learn how to, what is the food in Africa, what, they, what is the dance, what is the clothes, and things like that. musician who practices the traditional West African music will always, he's supposed to know everything, including the dance. So the, the dance and the, the drumming is, is very connected. There is something more than just the face value of the dance or the rhythms. And it's uh, really about the connectedness of everything. Saginaw Grant. I live here in California at the present time, but I'm from Oklahoma. But at one time, our dances are on for public viewing, viewing, or, or sacred dances. And we have uh, we have different clans. I belong to the to the Water Clan. My name is uh, Walpima. That means white white fish. I belong to the fish clan. These songs, these songs, a lot of the songs that I know, and they're telling stories about different things, about different events that happened in their lives. That's what our songs are about most of the time. Anybody can hear these songs and understand the feeling of these songs by just listening and listen to, to the words. You may not know what they're saying, but there are words that can touch you, make you feel good, all over, make you, make you want to dance, really. So you're listening to the beat now? Yeah. Your feet got to hit every time. When they first, first the Caucasian came over to this country, they were questioning, why, why did you come to America? They said, we came because we wanted freedom of religion. Okay, that was their answer. But as it turned out, they took away our religion. It took an act of Congress for us to be able to worship the way we were brought up. That affects us very sacred out there. It's like our church. We really do worship while we're out there. We pray while we're out there. This is where we bring all our, I hate to say trouble, I don't like to use the word. This is where we bring all our requests to the Almighty. We appreciate the, ab the ability to be out there, to be able to dance, to make our expression. We were simple people, but we can't define, for instance, love. There's so many ways of saying beautiful or something. We don't, we don't just say, yeah, I love you. 
we go around in a lot of different ways. You, you mean like a, a waterfall to me. We, we talk about beauty when we see it. This is what we want to express to everyone that we come in contact with. We're one with humanity. My Christian name is Cynthia Marie Dion. Um, I was born and raised in Pine Ridge, South Dakota. Um, my heritage, I am a Lakota, Ogallala Lakota. Um, uh, I am a descendant to Chief Red Cloud, who is my great-great-grandfather. Um, I can go back about seven generations in my family. Me personally, for the reasons why I dance and things like that, is because of my elders. You know, I dance from my grandmas and my grandpas, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, who just passed away recently. So I feel very connected to their spirit. Um, they just, they were very loving people, and I just, I, you know, that, that's my reason. My name is Larry Gonzalez, I'm from the Pine Ridge uh, Sioux Reservation in the, um, South Dakota. I'm Ogallala, Lakota Sioux, and um, I've, I've come here mainly because of, uh, I want to dance. The drums hear my mind, hear my, my, my soul, and I just come here to be around the people. Dance, be happy. And uh, um, I dance with my relatives, my the people, the, the uh, my health, um, my wife, my kids, my wife, my, my grandma, grandpas. I dance for them. I dance for the community. I dance for life. I, I, I love my Lord, and I dance for my Lord. My wife and I, we are co a totally committed to the co uh, community, and we are focused on the handicapped, the helpless, the elderly. The uh, people can't speak for yourself. We dance for them. Uh, I'm Stephanie Braun. I was born in South Dakota, Pine Ridge, South Dakota. My parents are Cynthia Gonzalez and Larry Gonzalez. What I dance is called Jingle Gift. The grass dancers, which are also men, are um, they lay down the grass, so it's like. They're, they're, they go in first to let other, all the other dancers go in after them. And then, yeah, and then the fancy is just like, fancy. <laughs> and I was born in Hollywood, California. At some point, I had this boyfriend from Venezuela and he played this Afro-Cuban music and I was beside myself. I said, what is that? And I had to have more and that was the beginning of chasing like a moth to a flame the Afro-Cuban music to Stanford, to Tijuana workshops, to Cuba three times, to every possible workshop and dance class that I could get my hands on, to every toke, to every drummer I could learn the smallest thing from. Trying to learn this culture because it is so big and 
to stick your toe in the water, you realize that you've just embarked on a journey that's going to maybe take your lifetime. You couldn't learn it all. So it's a lot of knowledge that you need to years and years and years, and it's infinite. You know, the songs are infinite. With that, for him, I am three different traditions. The Yoruba tradition, which is from Nigeria, and then the Ara tradition, which is from Benin, where is Benin today, and then the, the Congo tradition, which is from Bantu, which is Palo, from Bantu. Uh, so, to, to learn in depth of those dances, to be able to teach you to be able to Represent. Uh, it's important to the history behind. The salsa roots are in the Afro-Cuban folkloric culture, which is what I went to study in Cuba, was the Afro-Cuban folklorico, which is where you, you dance for these powers in the universe. You dance for the saints. You dance for the wind that uproots trees. You dance for the, the babbling brook that is irresistible female sexuality, where uh, she can pu even pull a goon out of his isolation. He, he, he's a hermit. He's also one of the Orishas or the, or the gods. And by her laughter and her, her loving herself, um, this goddess Ochun that is the, represented by water, when she dances, she dances, she looks at her own butt when she dances. She, she loves her own body. She, she laughs. And she's so irresistible to anyone. They see her, and so she was able to actually magnetize Ogun out of his isolation just by, by dancing, laughing in the water, splashing it around. And he kept coming closer to her and closer to her. And finally she reached in her honey pot and she smeared across his lips some honey. And he, he, was, he couldn't leave her. He followed her right out. And so that's what the other gods had sent this goddess Ochun in, is to pull him out, and she did it. My life, I have a nice family, my father, my mother, and some kids doesn't have this. Bom dia a todos. Sejam bem-vindos. Everybody here make part of the artist crew. The first moment for the kids is the drum, and the most easy drum to learn is like this: the bass drums, like a surdo in Brazil. is very important in my life. When I started the Meninos, my, my life changed because I, I make I start to make music classes. So. I like so much music to listen to music so I, I oh I know this this is samba I can play with, with this too. I think one one instrument one drama can play can change your life you know when I start this, in the first moment, just three boys I invited to my home. One week after, my regular students agreed the idea, call other kids and play together. Change for 20. We had some bad days in Meninos. He fought a lot with people just because of us, because we're making noise in the street. People shot us with the tomatoes and eggs. The band don't play well. Now, sometimes Meninos do Morumbi make a performance in the streets. A lot of neighbors coming to looking for and cry and said, wow, 
This is wonderful. This is make a lot of difference in the life of the kids. When I entered here, I met some things, some people very different of me. Black people and white people and rich people and poor people, boys and girls and all different peoples and all. Oh, they are different, but in, in this difference, we are very similar. We live in a, in a place that's a lot of violence, drugs, and in Meninos, they, they see another side of the reality. Create a kind of community and identity. We are a band. And everybody call me Fravão. Fravão is a Flavio, and Flavião is a big Flavio. And this make me very strong. And now we waiting for Mr. Obama coming here. <laughs> Isso era só a percussão, a música, depois a dança, depois a gente comprou uns computadores. Nós somos um lugar, junto com a família, junto com você pai, você mãe, a gente cria um espaço protetivo, blindado contra a rua. Nós não somos um espaço para pobrezinho, para coitadinho, para faveladinho, nada disso. Aqui dentro todo mundo é igual. Somos uma família agora. Obrigado. and especially Polynesian, like you said, the resurgence, to have that connection um, is, uh, I feel the drums is what draws people. And even at a young age, when you hear a drum, for some reason, you just find yourself moving. It's innate. It's, it's like your heart. For me, it's my heart. I love music. I love drums. It's the rhythm from my heart, you know? Always this, this kind of energy, you know? Everybody together at the same time, in the same song, the same emotion, it's nice. The best thing in the world. Yeah, there's a very direct connection, I feel, with, with humankind. And with the drumming, the drumming is, is a very good way to bring people together. <laughs> The sound of the bata, it gets in your body. So as a dancer, each part of your body, you, you give it to each bata, which is the drum, right? And then you just support yourself. Never have been a church person, really. really. I, I never liked organized religion. I always thought it was a little dull and boring. But for me, drumming and dancing and singing are just the opposite. They are the most passionate thing you can do. They take you out of yourself. They transport you to another world.